Boruto, the next generation, could not have possibly started off on more wrong feet than it ended up doing. It's so much is working against it just from the start. Not the least of which is the departure, I don't really want to say departure because he's still an overseer, but Masashi Kishimoto isn't the one pulling the strings anymore. And there was a time where you could probably say that was a blessing in disguise because the quality of his work certainly waned towards the end of the Naruto series, but losing the vision of that one specific person was absolutely going to be a hindrance, and as you'll soon find out, it was. It also didn't help that there were two side stories that were released before this series started, focusing on Boruto's two teammates, and both of them were set up as being a million times more interesting than Boruto, which wasn't aided by the fact that Boruto is a carbon copy of his father in all of the worst ways. Our first introduction to this wife-beater-wearing Wang Wrangler is in the last chapter of Naruto Shippuden, where he's seen defacing Ninja Mount Rushmore. And the reason why he's doing it is because he's acting out. The series explains that the reason why he's acting out is because his father, being the Hokage, is never home. So it's daddy issues. Oh, great! Do you remember back in... The original series of Naruto, where Naruto was doing the exact same thing, but the reason why he was doing it is because it was a litany of different things. It was He was reviled by the villagers, they didn't like him at all because they knew it was inside of him, uh, and he had no moral compass or any guidance really at all because he was an orphan, so he acted out, he was the class clown for attention. And you remember how that kind of made him, at least in the beginning, an appealing character? Boruto, on the other hand, both of his parents are alive. One of them is home all of the time because she's been essentially turned into a housewife. Way to grow progression. And his peers, for some reason, all seem to like him. So he's just a piece of shit. That's his character. So let's add all of this up. We've got an unappealing character that's being written by some schmuck, releasing at a time where newer series like My Hero Academia, World Trigger, and Food Wars are consistently killing it with their superb character writing. Suffice it to say, this series is starting from way behind. So Monday, May 9th, 2016, saw the release of the first chapter of Boruto Deep Space Nine. It sucks. It starts out with Boruto fighting against Tommy Two-Tone here, and his name is Kawaki. Ah yes, don't we all remember that truly memorable character from the original series, Kawaki, with his Seth Rollins haircut, douchey tribal tats, and obnoxious World Ends With You scarf. The age of the shinobi shall end. Even so, when? What? Even so... When? Is, is, that, is, that a, is that a question that he's asking? Like, I know that the world is going to be destroyed, but when is that going to happen? Could you give me an exact time frame on that? Because I've got a DVR that I need to set. Oh, oh wait, no, hold on. It's, <laughs> it's a sound effect. It, they're making a sound effect and putting that in a word bubble. What makes that sound? What makes the sound when? I, I implore you, if you know anything that makes the sound effect when, other than somebody literally saying when, tell me. Because, I don't know. And that word bubble thing being used to house sound effects, that's not an anomaly. That happens multiple times. And it's ridiculous. Oh yeah, and this whole flash-forward thing with fucking Seth Rollins here, yeah, that's really the only story we get in this chapter. Do you know how usually when you read a manga, or most books actually, the first chapter tends to be a lot longer, because the first chapter is what you use to set up your world, and set up your characters, and basically give your audience a hook to bring them back, but Boruto Into Darkness instead opts for none of that. The main focus of the chapter is that it's Boruto's little sister's birthday, and he says to his father, If you forget about my little sister's birthday party, I'll never forgive you. That's riveting stuff, and if I'd have been Naruto, I'd have been like, Listen, kid, fuck you. Little kid birthday parties blow. I don't want to go. 
but he's a little bit more on the nice side than I am, and he decides to send a shadow clone in his place, so at least he is trying, but because he is a chump, he no longer has control of his shadow clones and it disappears. All I'd have to say to that is I wouldn't worry too much about it, Naruto, because that's just one of many things that starts to go once you age. At least it, it'll, it'll get far worse before it gets better. One thing of note is that Boruto Search for Spock also decides that because this is a new series it has to like up its ante a little bit and it decides to rip off Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh by making ninja arts more interesting by having the little scrolls put into a dual disc system that get fired at your enemies which is pretty hilarious but you know what I don't want anyone to call me until they start doing like full-on ripoffs like Ninja Arts on Motorcycles, Ninja Arts in Space, or Ninja Arts in the Circus. And I mean, all of that could happen, too. I mean, the technological time period of the Naruto series has always been kind of fucky anyways. Oh, yeah, and uh, Sasuke shows up. And that's pretty much where the chapter ends. I mean, the tuning exams, which was the most interesting part of the OG series, is mentioned, like, once or twice, and it's done by Boruto saying, I have no interest in going to the tuning exams. And then two p... <laughs> And then two pages later being like, I guess I'll go to the tuning exams. So, things are pretty bad, but Boruto Voyager isn't completely dead in the water. There's still some great storylines that I can think of in my head, but um, most of them involve killing off a pretty good chunk of the main cast, specifically Boruto, and then with him out of the way, you can focus on the actual interesting characters that have been brought here, but... Um, that seems a little unlikely, considering Boruto is the titular character, and, as we all know, you can't spell titular without tit. Because he's a, he's a big dumb tit, is what I'm saying. And while I keep reading it, I don't want to, but I probably will, because I'm a filthy human being. I mean, if you think about it, there's just so much wrong. The art is bad. The characters are terrible. The story is trash and hasn't hooked me in any way yet. And the dialogue might as well be onomatopoeic, because that would be way more entertaining than any of the drivel that was actually written. But with the unfortunate popularity of series like this, I guess we can just all get excited for when Boruto has children of his own, and that we can keep this multi-generational landfill a-rollin'. I can't complain. I could but I won't.